Hello, welcome to the new Dr. Michael Explains the Water presentation. This is a more detailed explanation of the water presentation that I did on YouTube a while back that seemed to go viral. I've tried diligently to correct any and all mistakes that I made in that, and I'm trying to more accurately represent all the information. However, I need to clearly state that this is my personal opinion based on my personal research. It is not associated or affiliated with any water ionizer company whatsoever. With that said, let's begin. There we go. Excellent. I named this presentation The Magic of Skywater because of what it did for my daughter. Many of you have asked what happened. Basically, my daughter Skylar was born back in May of 2009 with a severe case of gastroschisis. She was literally born inside out. Everything that was supposed to be on the inside was the outside. Stomach, liver, pancreas, spleen, small intestine, large intestine, bladder, and right ovary. Uh, she went through a period where the biggest complication was known as acute dehydration syndrome. Uh, she spent a year at Scottish Rite. She came home after two colostomies and a reverse section of her bowel. When the dehydration would hit, this would be her mid-afternoon one day, and this was her that evening after she'd been revived at the hospital. Basically, the bowel would shut down, and so I became a hydration expert. I tried every pill, potion, water ionizer you can imagine, and uh, we came through it when someone introduced us to the Enagic SD501. That is Skylar today, and at the time that we tried it, I was actually completely opposed to alkaline ionized water. When it worked, I was a little dumbfounded. Uh, so I had to figure out why, and here's what I found. Um, the difference between the healthiest person and the sickest person is broken down into two components. Muscles, ligaments, bones, organs, tissues, etc. These all add up to 28% of the pa patient. The other 72% of everybody is just water. What I found out, not all water is equal. Uh, there's distilled water, there's reverse osmosis water. We tried filtered water, alkaline water, we even tried ionized water. We thought we found something with alkaline ionized water and it proved to be more dangerous than beneficial. And then there's something that's called electrolyzed reduced water. This was truly a game changer. Here's why. Electrolyzed reduced water, um, it's not a cure, but it's 72% of the Schuyler puzzle. It was not the only thing we did for her. It was the only thing we changed because we were doing everything else. What it is, is just science. It could realistically save your life. It'll make you healthier, happier, and stronger. But if you don't make healthy choices, your health benefits are not going to be as effective, nor will they last. To put it simply, electrolyzed reduced water gives you the best possible 72% of your body to work with. This facilitates nutrition, detox, health, energy, healing, by providing some necessary components. Let me explain. If you think of your body as a saltwater aquarium, you've got healthy organisms, filtration, you've got oxygen. If you don't take care of it, that tank gets dirty. Well, what you have to do with the human body is figure out how to clean your fish tank. The way that your body does that is through a process called cellular respiration. This is the way you basically get oxygen and nutrition into a cell, CO2 and toxins out of a cell. Uh, the main component for this is known as the aquaporin, which was discovered in 2005. And essentially it's the high speed plumbing system for the cells and it's the fastest way to get the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. Let me give you a, a brief course on cellular respiration. If you look over here, you'll see that there's a cell, there's some hemoglobin here, there's an aquaporin here, there's a charge, and this represents a cluster of water molecules that are electrostatically stacked together. Well, as your cell compresses, it excretes CO2 and toxins. When it pops open, it brings in oxygen and nutrition. When it collapses, it excretes CO2 and toxins. When it opens back up, it brings in oxygen and nutrition. This is called tensegrity. It's the premise by which an MRI works. The click, 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 click causes the cells to open and close. The computer takes a picture, generates the image. Well, electrolyzed water actually does occur naturally. Everybody say it's an unnatural source. It isn't. It happens when a lightning strike hits a lake or the ocean or something like that, and the charge on the water in that area lasts usually three to four days. What it does is it disassociates the water molecule. If you look over here, 
this is a technical term. A lot of people ask me, well, my chemist said it's not possible. That's because your chemist doesn't understand electricity. He's a chemist. He's looking for a chemical means to do it. This is electrical. When you use electricity to burst the bond, you'll take this H2O molecule and you break off a hydroxyl or a hydrogen. Sometimes you break them both off. What that does is it releases molecular hydrogen, active oxygen, hydroxyl ions, which are a free radical scavenger, in a water that's literally restructured for rapid absorption, thus maximizing nutrition and detoxification. It's nothing more fancy than that. It is superior hydration because your body needs these four things. Let me explain. When your body goes to produce energy, you oxidize pyruvate that is then driven across a hydrogen charged membrane into the Krebs cycle. In the presence of free electrons, you'll produce 32 to 34 ATPs. Then you need hydroxyls to scavenge out all the garbage. That's it. Works on a cellular level. Another thing that's different between electrically changed water and chemically changed water is electrically reduced water is not affected by stomach acid. The pH is a byproduct. When people say, oh, you need pH water. No, they don't. They need water with molecular hydrogen, active oxygen, and hydroxyl anions. Alkaline water is just water with more minerals. It is affected by the chemistry of the stomach. Electrolyzed reduced water is not. Another factor is it's self-limiting. The charge in the water only lasts for three or four days. It, therefore, it's not going to build up in your system. If you have chemically altered water, it will build up in your system. It will affect blood pH because the calcium, magnesium, potassium get stuck there. Currently, I have not found any negative research on PubMed in regards to electrolyzed reduced water. That doesn't mean there isn't any. It means that I couldn't find any. So what did it, how does this work? Well, basically they took a lightning strike, put it in some medical grade titanium plates that were dipped in platinum and put it into a machine that's about the size of a coffee pot. And what it does is it takes this big clump of water molecules and zaps it. When it zaps it, it breaks it into smaller groups because it has an electrostatic charge, giving you some free electrons, the molecular hydrogen, active oxygen, and all that. The more charge you hit it with, the more it breaks it down. Here you've got five groups of five or six groups of four. You could have two groups of 12. It just depends on the level of ionization. It's a rather simple process. If you think about this cluster of grapes, if I wanted to put all of these grapes into this bottle, I would rip each piece off and dump it in there. If I tried to cram the whole thing in there, there would be grapes that were rolling around the floor and missed the thing and all that. We want to get in as much as possible. These are not chemically bound molecules of water. If you chemically bind them, they're no longer water. They're not one giant molecule of water. It's a cluster of water molecules that are stacked together because they have a low electrostatic charge, a lot like Rouleau factor in the blood. Another way to look at it is when my son was rolling around on the carpet, uh, his hair got a high static charge. He's actually holding onto a necklace that's not causing his hair to stand up. But what happens is the hair dispersed. It got its own little static charge and it caused it to stand up and spread out instead of laying down clustered together. When you ionize water, you're causing the water molecules to disperse. That's all you're doing. If you wanna research this phenomenon like I did, don't use Google. It is my personal favorite search engine, but it's also the one that's most manipulated and hard to reference accurately. Besides, you can support anything with a quick Google search. The world was supposed to end several times. Just check Google. Instead, we're looking at something more scientific and how it affects the body. Do clinical research on PubMed, and you'll find that if you look up electrolyzed reduced water or hyphenite electrolyzed reduced water, molecular hydrogen, active oxygen, hydroxyl anions, free radical scavengers, you're going to find what I have found, that there's a lot of research to support this type of water. You're also going to find that if you look at pure alkaline ionized water, there's a lot of dangers that are associated with the remineralization component, which we'll get into in a moment. Molecular hydrogen is easily the primary benefit of electrolyzed reduced water. It literally charges a cell membrane of every single cell in the body, increasing its electrochemical potential. That means makes it healthier able to get good stuff in and bad stuff out. It's also a critical component for the nervous system. 
Um, there's a vast amount of research on PubMed in molecular hydrogen and Parkinson's, in MS, in autism, things like that. And finally, it works as a powerful antioxidant. The next component of the water is it is loaded with active oxygen. Active oxygen is what's required to produce ATP. It's what's driving the Krebs cycle. When you run out of active oxygen, your body starts to shut down because it can't work correctly. It's just like a fire. If you remove the oxygen, it goes out. Finally, there's the antioxidant and free radical scavenger components. Basically, iron in any acidic environment will start to rust. You can leave your tools from your garden outside in the rain and they're going to rust. Well, where do we have iron? We have it in hemoglobin. We talked about during cellular respiration, but we've also got it in the red blood cells. We got it in the brain, the kidneys, the lungs, the lymphatic system, the bones. If it's in an acidic environment, it's going to oxidize, which will create a toxic burden. Your body is designed to be slightly on the alkaline side. Um, today we're flush with oxidative and acidic disease processes. The number one acidic disease process we have right now is cancer. It's actually the prime cause is oxygen deficiency. You can look up Otto Warburg, do some research on that. Don't Google it. Go to PubMed, read the research. Um, number one acidic disease is hyperketoacidosis, which is basically diabetes. Um, they're now causing autism, diabetes of the brain. Um, secondarily, all of your inflammatory diseases are acidic by nature. That's what's wrong with Skylar with her irritable bowel syndrome. Your arthritis is an acidic waste product. Fibromyalgia, hyperlactic um, acidosis. Uh, chronic fatigue and endocrine stress is all associated with an acidic environment. And why are we becoming so acidic? Well, we drink coffee, tea, soda. Um, there's an enormous level of reverse osmosis water, which is misunderstood. You don't want water with the lowest parts per million of anything. That makes it acidic and it won't even carry a current. It's designed for coastal countries to have good water supply. Um, if you do some clinical research on this, you're going to see that it's associated with MS, MD, and Alzheimer's. Um, most any of your bottled waters, all your big 24 packs, those are most likely reverse osmosis water that's had minerals added to it, which is dangerous in its own sense. You don't get your minerals that way. Here's a couple of guidelines for hydration. If you're a regular healthy person, you want to drink about 50% of your body weight in good water every day. If you have acute health issues, this could be dehydration from working out in the yard, excessive level of sports, you could have the flu, you may want to drink nearly 75% of your body weight in ounces. However, if you have a chronic health issue, cancer, diabetes, something like that, you may need to drink up to 100% of your body weight in ounces. However, you got to be careful because your physician can specifically reduce your water intake for congestive heart failure, kidney disease, things like that. So why do I say that sodas and pH are important? Well, if you look at this scale over here on the left, it's red. That means it's going to make you rust. Over here, the blue will make you beautiful. This is what a typical capful of soda can do to the body. This is a 32-ounce bottle of uh, picture of 9.5 water. You can see the pretty blue color. It's loaded with hydrogen, oxygen, etc., etc. This is a, about a tablespoon of Sprite. It's high on the acid content. So what I did is I poured this water into this cup and ended up with a cup full of acid. It didn't dilute it at all. I then took this cup and poured it into 32 ounces. Now mind you, this is a tablespoon of Sprite and it destroyed 32 ounces or two pounds of water makes you think differently about going to McDonald's and supersizing it. You're literally acidifying your system. Yes, lemon juice in your water will do this as well. The reason that lemon water affects the body in an alkaline nature is it causes your pancreas to excrete an 8.8 .8 enzyme to neutralize it. Just as a side note. Other things that we do. This was huge for Skylar. Um, and I didn't realize it was such a big deal because we ate a lot of organic food, but you can use this water to clean your veggies. Um, these are cherub tomatoes that I used to buy and just pop, rip the top off and start eating them. I washed them in the 11.5 water from my SD501, and that is what came off. I was appalled. I was amazed. It tasted like they were fresh garden tomatoes. And when you smell this, it smelled like there was Windex or cleaning agents in that glass. 
And the reason that that happens is because all of your pesticides are petroleum based so they don't wash off. Another thing we use it for is our pet. I thought this was funny, so I'd include it. Thanks, Henry. This looks great and all, but does your house have any congan water? You know, we put out, we did the proverbial test, put out a bowl of tap water, put out congan water. Callie will drink the, the congan water every time. Uh, another thing is the disinfectant aspect of this. Um, this isn't just 2.5 strong acid. Because it has that solution chamber on the side, which 90% of all water ionizers on the market do not have, this machine produces 2.5 electrolyzed hypochlorous acid. The other machines do not. That is very important. Electrolyzed reduced water has been shown to kill MRSA, Kripke staff, E. coli staff, um, strep, all of that. Even worked on the C. diff that was a problem with Skylar. None of the other water ionizers that ha do not have a specific saline solution can produce hypochlorous acid in an FDA approved level. Uh, and let me explain, in 2009, Two months before Skylar was born, the FDA approved hypochlorous acid. It's a sterilant. It will kill just about anything. They're now starting to use it in all hospitals all over the world um, and places like that. A lot of physicians are using it, wound care specialists. We've been heavily involved in that because of the miracles we've seen with it. However, electrolyzing regular tap water without the addition of a salt solution does not meet the FDA criteria. As a note, the FDA has not evaluated the SD501 either, to the best of my knowledge. What it has done is we've had there's been a third-party evaluation by ATS Labs where they re-ran the Sterilox system FDA experiments on live cultured bacteria, and they got complete sterilization that was equivalent to the Sterilox system. <clears throat> Basically, hypochlorous acid occurs naturally in the body because it's produced in the immune system. It's actually the biochemical agent that starts the clotting process, making it ideal for initial wound care, and it destroys bacteria and viruses. Recent studies are actually underway to test this using necrotic wound. Um, I'm working with several uh, physicians and wound care specialists as it pertains specifically to um, necrotizing fasciitis, gangrene, MRSA, things like that. And the results are really promising. We're not the only one doing this. This is this is a global thing, and the results are really good. Um, why I look at the SD501 exclusively, or when I compare the competition, because they all want some information. Um, number one thing is power supply. Does it have enough energy to do it? There's been a lot of song and dance about the SD501 uses a transformer. It does, but it also has a switch mode power supply to regulate that and a condenser. If it doesn't have a transformer, it can't ramp your 110 watts up to 230 and keep it there. Switch mode goes up and down, up and down, up and down. What this transformer does is it ramps it up, and the switch mode will start to slow it down, but the condenser allows them to work together to keep a nice, stable stream of energy. <clears throat> On top of that, you need enough amperage. A half amp to a one amp machine is not going to get it done. It uh, doesn't mean it's not a good machine, it just means it's not comparable to the SD501. You need two to three amps to make it effective. You can ask any electricity, electrician. The voltage doesn't really matter, the amperage will kill you. The next component is you need a large quality plates. Most competitor plates are about 53 square centimeters. The Enagic plates are nearly 90 square centimeters each. So if you have one of the competitor machines with 12 plates, They've got like 600 square centimeters. Well, the basic Enagic SD501 has 640 square centimeters. The Kongen 8 has 720 square centimeters. So just because it has more plates doesn't mean the plates are the same size. Next, I look for a liquid saline electrolysis enhancer. That's because it's the only way to produce FDA-approved levels of hypochlorous acid. If you're looking at a competitor's machine with 12 plates and a pH that goes from 1.1 to 12 and it doesn't have a, a saline solution enhancer, it's not a comparable machine. It will not do the same thing. Yes, it will produce 2.0 pH water, but it will not produce hypochlorous acid 
which is what you're looking for. Um, another thing to avoid is anything that says energy saver. When it says energy saver, it means it's underpowered. If you're looking, if it's underpowered, they're going to add in minerals and remineralize it and the necessary minerals for your body. That means it doesn't have enough power to get the job done. Um, if they come in with a super fancy plate pitch, it's plated and it's mesh and it's a hybrid and it does this, you don't need it because solid plates are the most stable plates there are. And yes, they need more power to run effectively. And anytime they say there's a lifetime warranty, there's no such thing. I've bought several machines that I'll explain in other videos. We're getting to do a detailed thing on competition. Basically what they'll do is when they start to have problems, they sell off that brand, that machine to a third party and it voids all the warranties. It happened to me twice. The ST501 was about the ninth machine that I used. And I've kept looking because it may not be the best. I research this regularly and sure enough, it comes out on top every time. Um, I'm just going to hit this. Basically, when you're looking for power factors, it's watts times amperage times surface area. The SD501 has 358,000 PEUs. A typical 110 watt unit with 268 square centimeters of plate, which is a five plate machine and a half amp, is only at 14,000 PEUs, or about 4% of the power, so they have to add minerals. Finally, don't own a machine that you can't clean. Um, I see a lot of line about plates, calcium, and auto cleaning. The Enagic SD501 auto cleans itself every 15 minutes. And they have a manual cleaning cartridge that gets rid of not just the calcium on the plates, but the calcium in the lines. It gets rid of the calcium, the mold and the stuff in the lines and the housings. I've taken apart several machines and they're loaded with mold in the housings, the tubing, but the plates look good. Some of the plates erode on some of the competitors, but that's another thing. In fact, most municipal water supplies are getting worse and worse and worse. And Agic is staying abreast of this and realizes that they need to have a dedicated team of technicians that can completely clean your machine. If you can't clean your machine, you're most likely going to be drinking mold. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. But the machines that I've taken apart, I found mold in every one of them. And I took care of them according to manufacturer's standards. Here's a couple of plates. This is the size of the plates on my Royal machine. When it stopped working, this is a Jupiter. <laughs> they look scorched. Um, this was the SD501. These are about six years old. Um, I had some corrosion here. This was my Microlite. When the company failed to honor the warranty that was lifetime, um, I took it apart to see what was inside. You can see there's a burn mark here where the plate started to corrode. This is the Jupiter. Actually, if you come back here, you can see this is the mold that I was talking about in the lines and in here. Now, these, mind you, were machines that never needed cleaning. These plates don't have any calcium on them. They were accurate. There's no calcium on the plates, but the machine was not clean. Um, there's a reason why everybody compares themselves to the SD501. SD Basically, it is the industry standard. It's superior maintenance and cleaning. The quality of the plates are unsurpassed. The superiority of the power supply, to the best of my knowledge, it's the only one that uses a transformer and an SMPS and has a condenser. You can literally unplug an SD501 while it's running, and you're going to about another 10 seconds of power out of it. And that's just draining out the condenser that makes sure that the power stays even. Um, it's one of the longest companies in the history of the industry. Um, they have a wider diversity of uses for the water, um, the types of water it produces. And it's one of the few that actually use an electrolysis solution for hypochlorous acid. If their machine is bragging that they don't use a solution, it doesn't work. You can't use it for sterilization, period. Why I personally feel the SD501 is the best, I tried eight or more alkaline water ionizers. Bottom line is it worked for Skylar. Um, within four days, 80% of her symptoms had resolved. She had her first solid bowel movement in 10 days. And within six months, she was off feeding ports. Was it the water? Yeah, because it was the only thing left to try. Did it cure her? No. We were doing a lot of things. Enzymes, probiotics, she was doing her medications, she was doing protein powders, MCT oils, uh, medium chain triglyceride. She was doing all that. But the water was allowing it to get into the cell and the bad stuff to get out.
The short answer is it produces seven types of highly bioavailable water. It is already endorsed by thousands of hospitals and used, thousands of doctors and used in hospitals all over the world. The drinking water it creates has high levels of hydrogen, oxygen, and antioxidants. It can also be used for FDA level disinfecting, cleaning, food prep, and cosmetic. Hopefully we'll clarify some stuff and that should help you people a lot. And if there's anything that I can do, let me know. Look forward to some more meetings that we're going to have coming up. Not meetings, more webinars. We're going to be doing a detailed explanation of Skylar's story. We're going to talk about electrolytes, reduced water, and the science behind it in detail. Um, there's a detailed presentation on hypochlorous acid. Um, everybody's really looking forward to the Dr. Michael Explains the Competition and why I say that there really isn't any. Um, by the time you buy some of the competitors, there's some that go, why the SD501 doesn't work or it's a pyramid scheme or whatever. They honestly have no idea what they're, they're comparing. If you look at their machine and spend $3,200 or $2,500 for it, you have to turn around and spend another three to $5,000 for a hypochlorous acid machine. Then you have apples to apples. You don't get that when they're trying to pitch you on why you don't want the SD501. Bottom line is, it is the best machine that I have found. The only thing that I think may rival that is the Kongan 8, which has eight plates. I've used it. It's phenomenal. Um, we recommend it a lot. I look forward to having you see, getting some feedback on this. Have a great day.